Our next guest tonight says the FISA abuse report vindicates President Trump. Joining us tonight, Congressman Mark Meadows, member of the House Oversight Committee, member of the Freedom Caucus. Congressman, great to have you with us. And your reaction to uh, what Tom Fenton calls uh, straight out uh, a lamentable uh, exercise on the part of the Inspector General. Well, I think Tom's right in the conclusions that the IG drew, um, I don't agree with on, on a number of fronts, but the facts that he has in that report, I was actually part of a two-hour briefing. Uh, I get to see these IG reports from uh, various agencies, probably have reviewed more than any member of Congress, and I can tell you, it doesn't get any more damning than this. And when you start to look at, at the facts that are there, the fact that when they were doing a defensive briefing, with the president of the United States. They were doing one for Hillary and one for, uh, for candidate Donald Trump then. They were actually surveilling on the president of the United States at that time, at that critical time. We've got more than a dozen times where they actually secretly recorded conversations with Trump campaign officials, some of which were not even subject of the investigation. So it is very damning. I think the next 24 hours will tell as we go mm -hmm. through this. But I've had a little bit more time to digest it. And I can tell you that Director Ray would not be making 40 different steps to correct what they were doing if everything was like the Rose Garden and it was perfect. Yeah, well, it's far from perfect. Uh, it's a corrupt enterprise and has been for four years, at least, and likely a very long period before that, uh, Congressman. Uh, this is not a, uh, a report that suggests to me that Inspector Horowitz thinks there must be accountability, that people need to be prosecuted. In fact, uh, John Durham, the U.S. attorney, uh, who is the, if you will, the special counsel investigating the origin of all of this, uh, he makes it clear he disagrees with the, the, the inspector general's findings on predicate uh, and on the uh, steps that are needed to be taken. I, I, by the way, that's what I'm clinging to here tonight. Well, and I'm agreeing with John Durham, Lou, and I, I can tell you uh, th there was a narrow set of what Inspector Horowitz and his team were to look at, and that was the FISA abuse process. Indeed, there was a fraud perpetrated on the FISA court. We know that. We see that tonight. Not only were there omissions, but there were factual errors as it went to the court. They knew it not once, not twice, but three different times. And so uh, John Durham's right to, to point that out. Yeah, and as you mentioned, three three times, you know, once might have been an accident, twice uh, might have been a coincidence, three times, you know, you're you're, you're a damn We've liar a trying to here. commit yeah. fraud against the FISA courts and getting away with it. Uh, and right. what I don't understand is where is the chief justice? What is being done with those FISA courts? And why did Congress reauthorize FISA uh, through what is it, March? Uh, instead of waiting for this damn report. I mean, it's about time that both parties understand one thing, and that is that the American people have had a belly full of what made this FBI and this Justice Department uh, under the uh, previous president uh, operate the way they did. This is infuriating. Every American should be outraged at this. And what's been done to this president uh, and, and the American people, my God, if we're going well, to survive this, we had damn well better stand up on our haunches and demand some respect. I agree. And when everybody, when the left went crazy because Attorney General Barr said that there was spying going on, well, I can tell you, when you secretly uh, record a phone call or a conversation, when you're secretly doing that without the knowledge of anyone else, I don't know what else you call it but spying. And, and when we start to see the, the evidence that comes out of this 435-page-plus uh, report, uh, that will provide a good foundation for the work that John Durham's already doing right. as he expands it beyond where we are today. You know, and I look at this Justice Department, and particularly this Attorney General, and we are seeing a number of uh, advances that are important and sometimes lost from public view. But this is, for example, an Attorney General that has declared Huawei uh, to be critically a, a national security threat. He's also right. made it clear in his assessment of that threat that he is incorporating the conduct of the assessment of the conduct of the state of the People's Republic of China. We have right, right now a government and a president who demands transparency and never has it been more critical than now. 
to not only be transparent, but to act accordingly. Well, you're exactly right. I think the other thing that we have, you talked about Adam Schiff not showing up today. Well, you may remember not too long ago, Lou, you were covering this. Devin Nunes put out a report. Adam Schiff put out a report. Right. Today's IG report supports Devin Nunes, not Adam Schiff. So we're seeing the same kind of smoke and mirrors in this impeachment process that we saw in the, in the entire Russia collusion conspiracy. And at the end of the day, the American people will see the truth. That transparency yeah. that you talked about, it is time that it comes home and we hold people accountable at the ballot box by reelecting Donald Trump in 2020. And Congressman, there's no clear collusion uh, construction than that between the radical Dems leading this impeachment uh, assault in an effort to overthrow the president and the Russians. This is a collusion that could only be between the Democrats and the Russians because everything they're doing is in Russia's interest. To, uh, to, uh, to absolutely attack a president who is historic uh, in, uh, in every, every manner, every metric, and at the same time destabilize our government, uh, which is succeeding on every front, whether it is rebuilding our military, whether it is assuring uh, that our policies will follow national interest around the globe, whether it is an economy that continues to grow and markets continuing uh, to rise. It, it, this has to, that's the collusion that seems uh, the only logical explanation for what's happening right now. Well, my Democrat colleagues have done the American people a disservice. What they've done is they've given Russia a lot more credit than they deserve. Did they interfere? Without a doubt. Were they the reason why Donald Trump won in 2016? Absolutely not. And they've done a disservice by actually elevating their profile with all of this narrative that goes on. And that's the real tragedy of all of this. Congressman, your Democratic colleagues are snakes. In t to have done what they have done and to stand before cameras and microphones every day and lie through their teeth, which is exactly what they have done on Capitol Hill in that uh, body that you've served uh, as a representative of the great state of North Carolina. Uh, it is, they sully everything about the institution. Uh, it is a disgrace to the American people, as you well know. Congressman, you get the last word. Well, I can just tell you, this is nothing more than a partisan event that we've seen today and over the previous weeks. Uh, you know, they want to say it's not political, but you don't have focus groups to figure out what you're going to charge in a, a president with unless it it's, uh, has a political foundation. And so it's time that we, uh, we call it for what it is, and that is, is all about their 2020 re-elect or their... <laughs>